A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 156th episode of Together for Education webinars brought to you by Notebook. Almost two years ago, in April 2020, when the pandemic had just set in and schools had closed down, we at Notebook felt it was our duty to set up a platform for educators to connect meaningfully on, discussing problems they were facing with the rising need of digital education and online learning, and arrive at common solutions. Today, 155 episodes later, this platform has grown much bigger than we could have ever anticipated, all thanks to your love and support. We have discussed extremely curricular topics like digital learning, NEP and assessments, extracurricular topics like sports and theater, topics like school finance, teachers' career growth, and even evolved topics like mental health. We live in a tech-enabled world today. Since the ENIAC, we have moved forward faster than the speed of light when it comes to technological innovations. All around us, in whatever we do, there is the involvement of some technology. And every time we interact with technology, we are interacting with a large number of people behind that technology, whose understanding of how technology works often dictates how we benefit from the same technology. Given the massive growth in demand for these technocrats, the new developments like artificial intelligence, machine learning, automation, there has also been a steady rise in the demand for courses in coding. In schools, through government projects and with private players, a number of coding courses are on offer. However, they have also faced criticism in being too syntax oriented for taking away from the spirit of holistic learning. Today, we have a panel of eminent experts here who will discuss and debate whether it is really necessary to teach coding to young students in our schools. The first speaker on this topic today is Mr. Philip Barrett. Mr. Barrett retired as the deputy headmaster from the illustrious Dune School in Dehradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions. Mr. Barrett served the Dune School as housemaster, head of department, dean of activities, dean of student welfare, deputy headmaster, second master, and acting headmaster with great distinction. He also carried out a visioning exercise for the Dune School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. Mr. Barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at Wellington College UK in the year 2000. He is also an athlete, an adventurer, and a naturalist. And we at Notebook are privileged to have Mr. Barrett as our senior advisor. Sir, thank you so much for making the time to be here today. Over to you. Thank you very much, Shubayu. I hope I am audible. Perfectly, sir. Very good evening to you and uh, Achin, Abhishek, Gagori, Meghna, and our esteemed panelists, uh, especially my colleague, Harshal, uh, whom I'm very happy to see on the panel tonight. I must say that um, um, it's a very, very academic specific topic of which I have very little technical knowledge, uh, but I do have a lot of questions for our esteemed panelists, which I shall ask at the end of my short speech. Um, I have more, more, more questions and answers actually, but the little I do know of coding is um, whatever I've heard my young daughter learn from her white hat junior coding classes. And I must say, she is very interested in what she's doing and she's very focused. So there must be something about it. Um, the rise of technology has taken over everything today and runs our lives in many ways. Um, coding in this generation has become a very prominent new activity. Uh, it is, it, they have stepped up their game in the field of technology and it is the core actually of technology. One cannot create if one does not know how to code. I think it is the process of using a programming language to get a computer to behave as you want it to. Or in other words, coding is a skill where you take instructions and translate it into a language that the computer understands. Um, To get a child interested, I think one must show them that coding allows them to make um, and create games and apps, design uh, animations, and much more. And of course, it is fun. Um, Even if a child wants to do something outside of computer science, when they grow up, their coding skills will prove helpful across many fields. Very briefly, coding has its advantages. It helps trigger thinking ability because programming requires the use of technical, you know, logical thinking. Children tend to think differently. Quite often, our kids are only exposed to the user end part of technology the YouTubes, the video games, you know, the smartphones, and they download from Alexa. 
But what we could teach our children to create is a new technology that will catapult them into a digital age with each ease. Second is, I think coding like anything else, it's a new language. And if we start introducing a complex skill, such as computer coding to kids while they're young, they'll consume it quickly, utilize it flexibly and continue to foster it for decades to come. Computer coding is a, is a, is a type of language like English or anything else. There's a grammar and syntax that it has. Um, therefore, learning a code is very much like learning a second language. And all the advantages of learning another language will accrue. It's a type of storytelling. And just like stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end, I think coding too has a special, you know, every letter has an alphabet, is a special formula. And um, this thought process has been known to also help children in other areas of their learning. You know, they're more creative. Um, it also helps problem solving because the ability to code gives a new perspective to problem solving. Writing a code can get quite challenging. And through coding, children learn how to fix the problem and try again if it doesn't work. In other words, it also develops resilience because children will fail. They'll pick themselves and keep on trying. This ability to not give up, to stick with the problem, to find a solution is what is very important with coding. Of course, the big one is career opportunities. Most jobs today require you to be computer literate, but to take on the competition in the job market today, a child needs to have better skills, more skills than their fellow peers. Then, you know, rather than just being cool, coding has become a vital skill set. Coding specialists and computer programmers are well-paid professionals and are becoming increasingly sought after, you know, as the world begins to become more digital in the future. You know, it is, it is, it is a future, um, it's a great future prospect because one day robots, robots will rule the world, which today is changing faster than we can keep up with. Website applications and tools are being made to make our lives simpler and perform the most mundane of tasks. Machines rely on code in order to perform and therefore in order to prepare our kids for a highly automated future, it is imperative that they understand the basics of coding. Give it a few years and coding will become an essential part of our human language today. It also of course encourages creativity. You know, Coding for children is a fundamentally creative process, starting with nothing and finishing up with something. Creative thinking begins with a questioning mindset. And through coding, we enable our curious and imaginative children to be creative thinkers for the next generation. It can be taught by encouraging children to experiment, explore new ideas, question their assumptions, make mistakes and learn. Just as they learn from painting and cooking, coding encourages a child to benefit from the satisfaction through the process. Creativity lays the foundation for innovation, ingenuity, and leadership because it represents the ability to connect existing ideas with new solutions, approaches, and concepts. Of course, it is great fun. You know, it makes maths fun. Children who code are, get better in maths. It's not that maths is required for coding so much as coding will help the mathematical ability of a child. It also is a very hands-on way of learning. Children learn when they are doing, working with their hands. And, uh, you know, you know uh, actually interacting with their environment. And uh, just one of the strongest things about coding is that they're actually typing out those things and experimenting with a new language. And therefore, many parents today, of course, are hesitant to let their children start coding, while many others have actually started their children on coding. Most schools that I work with, coding is a part of the curriculum. They have integrated coding with uh, the 3D printers and, of course, with robotics. And... Um, I believe the changes are necessary with time and for a better, you know, in, in the course of the future, 
um, new mediums and methods are going to be you know, evolving. And um, some of the questions that I had in my mind, which I want to pose to the panel, um, this is my negatives of the coding process. Is it going to be another activity which keeps our children locked up indoors as they are thanks to COVID and the lockdowns? They're stuck with computers, they're stuck with TV, they're stuck with their cell phones, they're stuck with their social media apps. Is this going to be another activity which keeps them locked down? When I think children need to be out there in the open, playing with the mud and the sand and getting you know, their immunity high, does this have to be learned when children are very young? Can it not wait for the child to be 18 when his mind is so much larger and the grass so much faster? Why does it have to start so soon? My third question is, will all children be equally good at coding? Um, the rich metro child who has access to so much uh, you know, hardware and software um, versus the, the rural poor kid, um, will this throw up again the wide differences and the gaps in our education system between the haves and the have nots? Will it be tested? Will it be a part of the exam? syllabus. Because in my experience as a teacher, if something is not tested, children don't take interest in it, like the EVS or sometimes the yoga or like moral science or life skills. Should it be a subject to be taught in its, on its own or should it be mixed with 3D printing and robotics uh, and uh, as a part of the tinkering lab, which I find children are much more um, you know, used to and they have much more fun just tinkering around. Or will there be a syllabus that they have to follow and tick off the boxes as they go along? Should it be taught by experts brought in by the school? Or will the school, um, the school uh, computer teacher be able to teach this? Um, will it burden the already overburdened subject heavy curriculum that children have to carry? And will it be applicable to all children? Will, can all children learn coding? Or is it only meant for the more mathematical, logical minded children? So while I certainly see the advantages of coding, I also see the disadvantages of coding. And I really am you know, going to listen with you know, bated breath and open ears to see our experts fill, in, fill me in. It's something I don't know very much about. And uh, with that, uh, Subhayu, I'm going to hand this over to you. Thank you very much for listening. Um, good evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction to this topic. Uh, in fact, what you've left us today with is a wealth of questions that I'm sure our panelists are already pondering on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker on this topic is Ochin Bhattacharya. Ochin is the founder and CEO at Notebook. A chartered accountant by training, Ochin was a director at Deloitte prior to starting Notebook. He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in GE, PwC, KPMG and Deloitte. Ochin is a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales, a fellow of the ICAI, and a member of CPA Australia and CPA Ireland. He is also the recipient of the prestigious Indian Achievers Award. An avid reader and a passionate traveler, Ochin has keen interests in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He is a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce, and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He is also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates, and contribute significantly to their brand strategies. Ochin, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Shubha, am I audible? Loud and clear. I once again welcome all of you to today's session. As per Cambridge Dictionary, code is a language used to give instructions to the computer. So in, lay, in, in simple words, in layman's language, Coding is a skill of writing computer programs. Now, technology, as we'd all agree, has, has undoubtedly brought colossal of transformation in human lives, with coding being one of the gifts of this change. Learning to code has, has brought a change which is undeniable in the modern education system. I was listening to Baritza his experience with regard to schools that he works with, changes in the curriculum, what's happening around. 
and there is no doubt about it that it is it is it is increasingly becoming a part of the core curriculum let us going through a recently a, a survey report as per linkedin's emerging job report during the last decade the role of coding experts like today for instance data scientists have upsurged by 650% and the demand for coding is said to grow by 37% year over year i think the numbers are pretty much self explanatory and if we see what's happening around the world for instance i was going through now uh, some very uh, small interesting incidents i was i was reading about what's happening in china where chinese parents for instance are teaching their children how to code with many of them are made to learn the basics of coding or to develop at least a basic level of interest during the preschool years for them teaching their children to code has become equally important like teaching mandarin or or mathematics singapore is a country which has actually launched coding for fun as an as an optional enrichment class for primary and secondary students and this is way back in 2014 you know no again if you look at the impact of the pandemic learning coding post you know covid 19 and and the lockdown that we saw over last you know and whatever happened during last one and half years two years the experience that all of us had it has actually grabbed eyeballs as more and more kids are accustomed and and we also see so many various platforms coming in with their own offering with their own you know way of teaching etc and we have also seen that many professionals in different fields who are trying to reskill upskill themselves people who have lost their job during pandemic retraining themselves to become coders now today's topic with regard to do children need to learn coding so i think the advantages are numerous of course first and foremost it increases the thinking power of of children so according to studies which were conducted at uh, mit programming is advantageous for cognitive development a young mind when 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 learning computer programming not only learns how to type lines of code you know that that's pretty operational but at the same time also learns to think differently and i think that's the biggest advantage in this way his or her horizon of thinking grows now a, a good programmer need to think logically to to break a large problem into smaller pieces sub problems and this method is called decomposition so the young minds are given the task to take a to take a vague idea and use it efficiently if the first solution doesn't work then try out the hand with another and i guess this this approach is very very useful with regard to many situations in life being flexible being open to option having the determination and will to to try out different things also creativity of course it, it expands creativity of young minds like like anything considering the fact that it is fun loving but also easily understood and learning these skills makes young minds creative as they as they experiment with different codes they get a chance to design something that is their own you know created by them that is a very special feeling and of course children will improve by taking feedback so the way i look at it it just like learning any skill maybe as good as learning to dance sing or drawing by getting motivated as it is easy to pick up by young minds third of course is it it helps children become more confident because when they learn to code they also know that there is no shortcut to hard work they improve by failing and trying again and again again one of the key lessons for life so it is essential for kids to understand the use of coding properly as this 
as this uh, basic literacy. Today, today, if you look at digital age, this is basic literacy. We should help them to understand the technology around them. And undoubtedly, this is, this is future, is the new buzzword. And the demand for this will only escalate day by day. And any sector, not only technology, be it retail, finance, health, any sector that we look at. Incidentally, uh, I was referring to MIT, and I saw that even MIT has unveiled a pilot scheme to promote coding more efficiently, more effectively into curriculum. In, as, as, and this is a pilot which is being conducted in New Hampshire. Apart from that, even if you look at the hiring pattern of global tech giants, be it Twitter, Facebook, Quora, Bloomberg, they're increasingly hiring coders. And of course, majority of them, Indian coders. So coding is considered a, a foundational literacy skill for the, for the digital age. And it is, just like, it is just like learning about reading and writing. But instead of reading and writing paragraphs of a story, children are reading and writing in a computer code. And I think Bert Sameri rightly mentioned that very much comparable to learning a new language. Instead of learning, say, say French or Spanish or Mandarin, Children are learning how to communicate with technology in languages like say, HTML, Java, Python. And the same benefits of learning a new language apply to when kids learn coding. The benefits like uh, the, the benefits that we get when we learn a new language uh, increase memory capacity, critical thinking, problem solving, ability to multitask, better listening skills, and increased level of concentration. So just like how Learning a new language is easy when, when you are younger. And of course, there are, there are numerous examples when people have done it even in their 30s, 40s or beyond. But statistically, comparatively, definitely it's a little easier. And this holds true for coding as well. Learning to code expands also the, the verbal and written skills. Because when they're learning to code, they're learning syntax, the phrases and sentences that when combined together, help to build a computer program. Now, this set of instructions could then be used to help build things like maybe a, a website or a game or a movie or other machines and systems. And creativity is something that goes hand in hand because children can actually explore and experiment to find multiple ways or solutions to solve a problem. As they're building the different solutions, they learn from them and then adjust and make changes to their coding until they, they reach their, their desired level, desired effect. In addition to the development of creativity, children learn about the concept of refining process or steps to make their, their, their end output, end product even better, fine tune it, refine it. Now better in coding could mean that they do something in, in fewer steps to be more efficient or maybe adding more complexity like creating a new level to a, to a game. And of course, uh, as far as math skills are concerned, real maths is, is used in coding like in counting, dimensions, distance, radius, iteration, decimal, quadrant, plane, and the list could go on and on. But the main benefit besides exposure to more advanced math skills when compared to grade and age is that coding helps children to visualize the abstract concepts of, of, of mathematics and make them more concrete. Also, if you look at academic writing abilities and how coding helps in improving it. Now the process of writing a code is similar to writing in, in, a, in a foreign language. Thus can, it can actually help to improve academic or writing abilities. Now a lot of the steps in writing for coding are the same as academic writing. Now, because first, Children must learn how to, how to plan and structure their ideas for the program, just like they would do when planning to write an essay, for instance. So then we plan and structure our ideas. And of course, graphic organizers, bubble maps are also used in, in, in the beginning stage of the programming process. <clears throat> Additional organization is done by organizing the details into a sequence. So when we discuss about advantages, it's numerous. 
helps in pro helps in problem solving abilities. No doubt about it, because they're using uh, they're using a computer language to help solve a problem. Ultimately, what they're trying to do is is to simplify things. And examples could be to could be numerous. For instance, how to purchase a product from an online store, how to turn off or on your lights through voice recognition, or how to move a character in a video game or a movie. Now, by learning coding, children are able to learn to create directions to solve a problem. They'll also realize that that there could be multiple ways, more than one way, to solve a problem. And I think that is the biggest learning. But how if you take a more holistic view and, and, and look at it, it is also true that coding is just a language. The child must know what to write rather than only, rather than only knowing the writing rules. I think that is more important and requires logic, sense of direction. Because at the end of the day, the sense of purpose is not there. Even, even if you know the language, what do you express? You know how to express yourself, but what, ultimately, what is it that you want to communicate? Now, there are many, there are many platforms, as uh, Bharat Sir Shivaji mentioned. Of course, some of them free, some of them chargeable, to, to explore a child's interest. But I personally believe that forceful feeding, a mandate, or 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 kind of uh, you know uh, communicating a message that coding is the only thing which is important may not help. Our children may find it relatively easier to get jobs in future if they can write computer programs. There's no doubt about it. The world is moving in one particular direction, but they also need to live a life. Surviving competition, struggle, sadness, betrayal, heartbreak, a life where they make their own decisions. I was reading about uh, Francis uh, Lalleman, who worked with children and adults on new and innovative pedagogies for more than 40 years. You know, if, if you look at some of his research publications, they're like acclaimed all over the world. He has worked in India and abroad. And I remember he, 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 in one of his publications, he once said, we need to create spaces for our children. We need to create spaces for our children. A kindergarten with a toy corner, a reading corner, an activity corner, a sports corner, and can also have a coding corner. We need to devise new ways of learning, but we need to let our kids make their choices. At the end of the day, there's no doubt about it that it is important, but we need to let our children choose for themselves. Now, it will be easier for some of us with more privileged background to denounce coding and support our kids in an unconventional route. It may seem challenging for, for the rest of us to ignore coding classes, just like coaching classes. So when we, so if, if, if I take a, you know, if, if, if we just remember when we were growing up, early nineties, late eighties, I remember a bank PO probationary officer was a classic middle-class dream, somewhat more achievable than maybe an IIT or a UPSC or a chartered accountancy or a medical. But our bank POs from our generation, the happiest lot, not sure. I think this explains a lot. So these are some thoughts that I uh, wanted to share. I thank all of you for giving me a very patient hearing. But sir gave us a wonderful start and shared some of his uh, experiences. A very practical perspective. We have a wonderful panel here today. And I'm sure that this particular topic, considering the fact it's a very specialized topic, I took a more outsider's view, but I would like to listen from the experts with regard to their experience, with regard to real, you know, real life case studies, et cetera. I thank all of you again for giving me a patient hearing. Over to you, Shubhai. Thank you, Ochin. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, as Ochin mentioned, we do have a fantastic panel lined up for you. But before we go on to the panel, a little bit about us here at Workbook. 
We at Notebook are an edtech platform. We create short videos that pertain to the school curriculum. Every subject from and every topic, right from classes one through to class 12, are covered using these short videos that come in handy in two cases. One is when you as a teacher are taking a class, you will find these videos a great way to visually introduce the topic to your students. Whether your class is happening online or offline, these videos can be played for six to 10 minutes before a class begins. And then the teaching process becomes so much more enjoyable. In the second case, the student who's studying at home also has access to these same videos on their personal devices, be it a laptop, a smartphone, or whatever connected device that they have access to. They can watch these videos over and over again and get a better understanding and grasp of the topics that you taught. I'm going to play a short segment of one of the notebook videos for you so that you know what it is that I'm talking about. Namaste, Bachchon. Notebook mein aapka swagat hai. इस नए वीडियो को आपके सामने प्रस्तुत करते हुए हमें बेहद खुशी हो रही है हमारा उद्देश्य है परंपरागत शिक्षा को आधुनिक तरीके से पेश करना ताकि हमारी ये नई पीढ़ी या आप सभी कहीं भी कभी भी इसे आसानी से पढ़ सके लेट अस फाइंड आउट अबाउट दिस सिस्टम फर्स्टली द मुगल्स डिड नॉट बिलीव इन द रूल ऑफ प्राइमोजेनेचर प्राइमोजेनेचर इज अ सिस्टम ऑफ ट्रेडिशन वेयर द एल्डेस्ट सन inherits the father's estate or property the mughals followed coparcenary inheritance in which the father divides his property among all his sons the income of the mughal emperor came from the produce of the peasants the kings collected the taxes from the peasants through the zamindars the zamindars could be village headmen or powerful chieftains for example in the expression 6x cubed minus 9xy the terms are 6x cubed and minus 9xy each term is made up of factors for example in our previous example 6 x x and x are factors of 6x cubed and minus 9 x and y are factors of minus 9xy कर्म के आधार पर क्रियाओं को दो भागों में बांटा गया है अकर्मक क्रिया और सकर्मक क्रिया अकर्मक क्रिया जिन वाक्यों में कर्ता के साथ कर्म का प्रयोग ना हो उन वाक्यों की क्रियाएं अकर्मक क्रिया के अंतर्गत आती हैं, जैसे मोहन रोता है श्याम दौड़ता है Just as humans need fire, water, oil, vegetables, etc., as some of the essential ingredients to cook food, plants also have a few basic necessities to self-prepare their own food as a part of autotrophic nutrition. These basic ingredients are water, sunlight, soil, and nutrients. Let us now go through an example. We begin with the date, 30th October, 2019. Then the heading, a visit to an orphanage. followed by the salutation dear diary next we come to the body or the content notebook mein aap sabhi ka punh swagat hai that was just a small mash up of a few notebook videos if you head over to our website www.notebook.school or visit our mobile apps for android and ios you would find more than 10000 such videos at your disposal well with that done It is now my privilege to introduce the extremely honorable panel that we have with us here today. We have with us Harshal Gunwant, who is the master in computer science at the Doon School in Dehradun. He is a compassionate teacher with over nine years of experience and has been successful in designing engaging lesson plans and integrating educational technology to drive retention, comprehension, and participation. He is also accomplished in cultivating long-term relationships with students. and works in a very fast paced academic environment mr gunwant finished his schooling from rudrapur before getting a bsc from the kumaon university and in parallel finishing his advanced diploma in software engineering from aptech he then went on to do his msc in information technology from the kumaon university where he was the university gold medalist he also completed his mtech from the gb pant engineering college utu dehradun where he was the university bronze medalist and merit scholarship holder he is currently pursuing his bed from ikfa university at dehradun 
He also authored a book, Framework for Developing a Meteorological Data Warehouse from Concept to Design, which was published by Notion Press in 2021. Mr. Gunwan, thank you so much for being here today. It's a privilege having you on the panel. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. We also have with us Mr. Devashish Kumar, who is currently working as the senior consultant at Sustainable Living Lab, a sustainability consultancy and innovation lab founded in Singapore. Ex White Hat Junior, Mr. Kumar is also pursuing his PhD in computer science and engineering. With more than five years of experience as an assistant professor, he has been recognized several times for his efforts and contribution towards the inclusion of applied work among students. He was appreciated by the NPTEL for his instrumental role as mentor and spark. Mr. Kumar guided 100 plus students in the NPTEL course. Few of his students brought laurels by figuring in the top five positions in such courses. Mr. Kumar also mentored students at a national level hackathon and coding events conducted by Smart India Hackathon ACM. Sir, thank you so much for being here today. It's a privilege having you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. We also have with us Mr. Mukesh Kumar, who has over 31 years of experience that includes teaching computer sciences to classes 11 and 12, development of technology infrastructure, support system, website development with automated school admissions process. He has authored several books in the field of information technology. He's had 25 years as CS expert in CBSC, two years as part of IT committee of NIOS and NCRT. He's responsible for training over hundreds of computer science teachers from various states of India, Bahrain, Muscat, Dubai, Sharjah, and Abu Dhabi. As Asia Pacific SQL PLSQL instructor for Oracle Academy, trained teachers from Singapore, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Malaysia, China, Egypt, Prague, and India between 2006 and 2009. He's a Google certified educator, teacher, and innovator, and has conducted several Google tools workshops for teachers and administrators from India, Sharjah, Abu Dhabi, and Uganda. So thank you so much for being here today. It's indeed a privilege having you on the panel. I will stop my share now and switch on my camera. Once again, a very good evening, and thank you so much for being here today. So we have quite a few questions that Bharat sir has left us with. Uh, I'll just pick some of them and throw them to you. And we would uh, request all of you to keep this a free flowing discussion because all three of you are absolutely stalwarts in this particular topic. The first question is the one that is the most obvious one. That's about age, right? How early is too early? How late is too late? Uh, Mukesh Kumar sir, if I may come to you first. Yeah. Sir, what do you think is the most appropriate age to introduce coding or computer programming to a young student? Actually coding is nothing but implementation of logic. And logic is the first language which is learned by every single, all of us basically. At the age of one second, the child learned logic when the child came out in the world and cried. So a command got executed in his or her mind that if uncomfortable cry, the child felt uncomfortable and it cried. And the child saw that it worked well. The child's cry worked well and uh, the child was immediately provided with a lot of comfort, a cozy cloth around and all that. After some time, the child again cried. The child cried because the child was hungry and uh, the child knew that it worked last time, it will work now also. And this way, up to seven, eight, nine months, the child continued with this kind of logic, continue crying, that means loop, getting executed. So as far as age is concerned, the logic came in the child's mind much before age which came in his or her mind. So according to me, the, as far as age is concerned, logic is already there. It is just implementation of logic with the help of coding. Yes, uh, I would not suggest that everyone start coding and start developing applications, that is wrong. At the early age, the children should enjoy coding. Children should be exposed to those kind of tools which help them to understand implementation of logic rather than start coding in Python, Java, and uh, many more languages, right? So in early age, I will prefer that child should play around with those tools which help them understand how to implement logic with the help of 
simple drag and drop methods and all the those kind of things wonderful sir thank you so much for that um uh, mr devarish kumar if i may come to you next sir uh what's your take on this uh, because you were with white hat junior you are currently in sustainability lab uh at what point because uh, sir love very wonderfully give us the journey from logic into coding but at what point is syntax okay to be introduced uh yeah i totally agree with uh, mukesh kumar ji and like uh yeah we when we come you know like in this world we come with some logic right so that's truthful and uh, to take on your question you know like what is the right age to include syntax so before taking this question you know let's go a step back and you know try to understand what coding is right so when we say that you know like we talk about coding so why we do coding either you know like we try to design some kind of softwares you know and why we create those softwares it's very simple that we are trying to map some real world uh, scenario or we are trying to solve some real time problems so coding is all you know like c starts for coding and c starts for creativity you know like i relate it in this way because uh, if you are not creative in your approach uh, you you won't be a good coder you know that's you know like what is uh, i consider as a universal truth now um, mukesh uh, mukesh kumar also told that you know like yeah at the initial stage it's good you know that we play around some tools uh, for example block based coding or you know we can go for some drag and drop you know it's the same thing once uh, that thing you know like you have a good understanding of the logic and you know like how things work the second stage can be you know like uh, you can go to some low code tools you know so there are three different categories no code low code and then you go for pure coding so uh, after this uh, block based coding which we consider you know like in no code we move to a tool you know like where we have not the entire thing is done you know like by writing piece of lines of codes but some aspects of it is done you know by uh, writing piece uh, you know like uh, code lines that is the stage you know like where we can uh, talk about the syntax where we can we can talk about the semantics of that programming language and i believe you know like uh, class 6 to 8 or you know like is a good one uh, that depends upon you know like the audience also you know the students from where they are coming right and what is their understanding level so we can't uh, you know like fix some particular age some hard and fast age you know where we should start talking of instead of that we can consider a range of it you know like from 6 to 8 or you know like from 7 to 9 uh, you know where we can start talking about you know this coding uh, syntax and semantics of that programming language and once that is done you know like uh, and students is having a good understanding of it we can go ahead with you know the proper coding uh, scenario you know like writing everything you know using some programming language so that is the approach you know that if followed Uh, i don't think so like including uh, involving coding or you know like involving students in coding it's going to be a challenge you know because everything is easy with the involvement of no code then low code and then proper coding that is my take on you know uh, on your question wonderful sir right so nicely ease them into it is the policy yeah uh, mr gunwant if i may come to you next uh, i given the time around which you were in school i remember there were I I did my schooling in Calcutta. I finished school around 2000, and initially schools had either a logo program that started around class four, you know, the FD40, RT90, and uh, then you had a set of schools which would start GW basic around class eight, with compulsory classes in Boolean algebra and drawing gates and stuff. And I understand things have moved on somehow from that, and we are suddenly talking Python. Right. Uh, do you still feel that? we are missing out on some pieces of basic critical thinking that that boolean algebra process taught or is this the new way to go uh see firstly uh, the fact is that we are missing out certain things i completely agree that uh, you know coding has become a significant part of our school curriculum and these young mind require to be in an environment that build confidence and instill this genuine desire to experiment at times we do impose coding on them without realizing that there is a sequence of how coding is taught that starts from building the logic you know thanks to the tech developments and availability of insightful tools it can be made stimulating and gamified so that they are engaged 
uh, I remember one of the webinar that the notebook conducted, the notebook steered a wonderful webinar, uh, you know, on the topic gamification. And that is the way, you know, how we can engage the learners in the academic space. If you suppress that logic building exercise, some of the finest ideas will never become a reality. So with practice, kids gain an aptitude in their analytical and logical skills, allowing them to, you know, move on to solving complex problems. And eventually, you know, uh, building programs completely on their own, ultimately making room for their ideas to flourish. So once a learner has attained the basic logical skill sets, they should start getting familiar with the you know, syntaxes and the programming that you're talking about, Python and other things, and doing the implementation. So I would say that we need to keep the spotlight on what genuinely matters, and that is skill building, which should be structured, engrossing, and well-paced. Wonderful. I think that was a beautiful take on that. Thank you so much. Uh, Devajit Kumarji, I'll come back to you again. Uh, we, and I'm just borrowing from Baritza's questions here. We are talking about a certain case where a child comes from a certain background of affluence or a certain socioeconomic strata, right? Do you think this process of easing in would apply equally to all strata of the society or maybe say a student from a tier three town? Uh, to come back to your question, Subhayoji, you know, like uh, last two years, I'm not going, you know, like far behind, but last two years, what has happened because of COVID, you know, like even a student who is in the remotest area of India, you know, he is having access to, you know, like mobile phones or he is using laptop or tab, you know, for his online classes. So what has happened that he has become tech friendly, right? So he knows how to make use of those uh, uh, technologies. And if I say that like before two years, yeah, it was a big challenge, you know, because they were not aware of it. There was a limitation of internet connectivity which you know, Indian government is taking a hard step to connect even the remotest place with internet uh, broadband. So the first step, you know, or the first thing that is important is, you know, if uh, the student is aware of how to make use of that text technology. And to some extent, you know, that gap has been removed. So every student, you know, like even in a small village is aware of how to make use of mobile phones or how to join online classes and everything. The next question comes, you know, like uh, how easy it will be to, to teach them, you know, coding. So uh, as uh, Harshal Ji told, you know, like thanks to the tech uh, giants, you know, companies, you know, who, who are coming up with no code tools, right? So even if they don't have, you know, like very good logical understanding, you know, uh, or very good, you know, like uh, analytical skills initially, but these no code tools, you know, they will, uh, you know, uh, they will uh, create a smooth path for them, you know, to learn and to build their analytical skills or logical skills while they, you know, like start designing some simple games and implementing some logic. So yeah, it will be, a, you know, like there will be a small gap, but that gap is not so wide, you know, if we uh, consider a student coming from remote area or from, uh, from metropolitan cities. So that is what, you know, like. Wonderful, sir. So the use of technology to ensure that technology can be taught to those who are finding it difficult to unlearn technology. Got that. Uh, Mr. Gunwan, sir, if I may come to you next, uh, I would pick up another of Barichar's questions. And this is about students being stuck indoors. Now, I know it for a fact that the Dune School promotes a lot of outdoor activities and you do, you know, send out students on a regular basis on field trips and all. But look at the wider gamut of schools. As students are becoming more and more indoor bound, I mean, we have even now started talking about games as esports. So, where do you think this can fit in with the requirement of physical development of a child? I think firstly we need to understand, like you know, what kind of academic space are we giving to the student? That's the first thing. Second thing, think of course with the pandemic-driven obstruction, there were a lot of things that were lost. I mean, the students were at home. We really do not know what they were doing. You know, the screen time increased, and so many things up. So you know, what we have done, I mean, I mean, over here is we tell them that, you know, what kind of physical activities they do over there. Secondly, uh, you know, uh, you said that uh, what, like basically when they are at home, it's it has become important for us because they can now work at their own convenience and they can work at their own pace as well. So, uh, you know, this has become an era or you can say the time for experimentation. I mean, when they are in school, of course, they will have very limited 
time in order to be involved in such activities. You know, besides being in the physical environment, yes, they have to be at home and they get more space for, for experimentations and other things. In fact, Mr. Uh, Ochin stated that, you know, China is one nation that has exposed children to coding even before they enter preschool. And uh, with the National Education Policy 2020 that talks about coding, artificial intelligence, uh, you know, machine learning that have become increasingly important part of the school curriculums. So the fact is that we cannot stop this progress. We have to make a continuous progress in that. Besides, we also have to make sure that, you know, they are connected to their physical environments as well. And when we say physical environments, I feel that when, you know, when the, when a child is basically learning programming, so it's an opportunity for them to learn how do we communicate with the machines? How are they responding? You know, you know what tools are being used to make this wonderful websites, robots that they normally see. So uh, basically it has to be connected. I mean, your physical environment and this, you know, tech enabled cosmos have to be enabled, have to be amalgamated so that they get those, so that they get the best. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Mr. Mukesh Kumar, sir, if I may come to you, sir. Uh, we have seen STEM focus in our education for a very long time, right? Because of the prominence of engineers and doctors, especially in the spectrum of earning, there was that bias. Off late, there was this focus on saying, let's go to STEAM model, where we included arts and arts education was slowly back coming back into the fold. So how does teaching somebody coding, right? And I'm talking coding not in the limited sense of syntax, but also coding and logic and critical thinking, vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the curricular system. In times to come, computing and coding will become integral component, just like we have uh, science, mathematics, English as the components existing for uh, years now. Uh, in times to come, I think this will become an integral component of our education system and uh, logic, uh, learning of logic and analytical skills will be part of the curriculum. Right now also the uh, national policy of education is uh, uh, giving a lot of ideas of integrating various subjects uh, with each other and uh, giving a lot of scope to people who want to learn a specific thing at an early age. Right. Uh, as far as uh, coding is concerned, if uh, is, it is taught in the early age, uh, the early age children have a lot of creative ideas and they have no limitation of thoughts. As soon as we grow, uh, the mindset goes like this. As soon as we become experienced, we are very, very scared of failures. So as soon as something goes wrong, we just feel that, oh, this is not to be done. At the early age, this fear is not there. It does not exist at all because there is no experience and they want to gain experience. At that time, the kind of creative ideas and uh, out of box thought which come, which will never ever come in engineer's mind. Because engineers have learned and they have seen failures in life and they will not try to do something which never worked at some other uh, lab or they have read that this did not work. But this child who has never experienced, never read about that, they will definitely try to do those things and they might succeed in solving those kind of problems. So I think in times to come, coding will become integral part. Maybe mathematics and coding will uh, merge together and handshake along with some communication language so that a, a jumbled curriculum will come out which will be very very helpful for the uh, new generation people and uh, things are changing very fast in last two years uh, as uh, Devashi rightly uh, pointed out that in last two years the communication uh, tools and computing tools have uh, gone uh, to the remotest of the places and this is what has uh, been done. I think next 10 years, this would not have been done if this pandemic. So it is in a way uh, for this particular component that is IT sector, this has been boon because uh, whatever we wanted to achieve after 10 years has happened in two years, right? So I think um, coding is going to stay whether we want it 
or we don't want it yes its flavor might change its implementation uh, methods might change but it will going it will uh, stay wonderful wonderful sir uh, harshal i'll come back to you uh, you were talking about how balance how to balance this in the curriculum we have also been talking about multidisciplinary curriculum very frequently over the last couple of years uh, do you, would you say that coding or even computer science education is something that cuts across all of the other subjects and is perhaps the easiest one to blend in with others see all right firstly uh, you know as mr mukesh kumar pointed out the children grow up with an inherent capability to adapt to new logics and technologies you know they can express themselves through code and you know find it fun to create these applications when we say multidisciplinary coding has become an indispensable life skill too therefore it is pertinent for them to interpret this tech driven universe around them get inventive get into coding and rather than just being you know digital consumers they become digital creators and transformers so when we say multidisciplinary i feel that coding belongs to every school right next to the core subjects like biology chemistry and mathematics and uh, mr barrett also you know asked that can everyone become a good coder so uh, i would end up by saying that you know we do not mean that all children grow up to become coders but this develops valuable scientific or you can say multidisciplinary or you can say creative skills empowering them to thrive in our like you know ever expanding digital environment wonderful thank you thank you so much for that uh mukesh kumar sir i'll come back to you uh this is uh this is typically a commentary on the way the country is going right now we produce the largest number of computer engineers anywhere on the planet statistically speaking unfortunate reality is most of them end up in the services sector and we have typically not been historically known for developing great products or absolutely original research sir do you think this introduction to coding to a whole new generation of students might be a way to change that yes already it is changing in last uh, two years you must have heard there are number of applications which are developed by indian uh, students and at early age at the age of uh, 13 is the age of 14 at the age of 15 number of uh, uh, apps were uh, uh, awarded by the prime minister also so the things are changing very fast and the, a lot of uh, new generation students want to become entrepreneurs rather than uh, going to work for somebody else whether they fail or succeed they keep on working on that and uh, in my knowledge not only in my school but other schools also i have seen the classes 9th and 11th children are getting uh, exposed to a lot of uh, such kind of activities and they are uh, successful also in doing that and i don't think when they will uh, grow up and uh, complete their education they will work for somebody else they will be making their own uh, systems uh, and best thing is that uh, today's uh, generation uh, we thought that is uh, too much of uh, uh, addiction of uh, computing devices but at the same time i have seen that they are uh, worried about their future and they are worried about their future social circles also and they whatever they are uh, working on is keeping all those social uh, social aspects and future and environment in mind so that is one very good thing happening wonderful sir i mean i i love it when you know we talk about topic which has all positive outer you know roots forward uh, mr devansh kumar this is the last question that i have and this is regarding creativity which we have been talking about now some have said that if i make it too syntax oriented or if i give you too strict a framework within which to operate it stifles creativity and the other end of the spectrum is the fact that to write any two lines of code to make hello world appear on screen you had to want to make hello world appear on screen so where does coding and creativity interact uh that's a uh, good question in fact so i believe uh, i related see with coding and see with creativity so this question is put upon me <laughs> that's good so uh, uh before you know like uh, shubhay i would just like to say you i was going through a report of mckinsey and uh, they were talking about the fintech, fintech industry right and the evolution that fintech industry is going to face with uh, you know this upcoming technologies 
there i just i was you know like shocked to see one thing that you know they are also using you know like no code tools right uh, like bubble like app sheet uncork you know so if we say that you know like if we relate creativity with only you know like line, writing down lines of code so that's not justifiable because nowadays you have so many no code tools also coming in picture along with low code tools okay that makes your task easy and creativity uh, why i have related coding with creativity is uh, see um, mr mukesh told that you know like and mr arshar also discussed about this that once when a child is you know like he's not he's young right so he's not having a uh, lot of pressure or you know he has not to think about his job or he has not to think about the uh, you know like uh, his re uh, relatives you know he's very free minded and while anyone is free minded they can give you know like n number of tries you know for to perform any task and there is the thing you know where creative comes in picture or creativity comes in picture because you are free minded you are open minded and you try to have multiple approaches to solve a single problem which you know like with age or with you know like if we say that if a coder is 30 years old right so he will he will hesitate at the first go you know to have to try an approach you know like on any critical project but you know if he is a class 9 student or you know he is a 17 year old student or 14 year old student you know they don't have any such pressure and they put their all you know, like all approaches you know like you say n number of approaches to solve a single problem so that is where creativity and uh, yes uh, with the you know like uh, coming up of your no code and low code tools uh, this creativity is coming more in picture because instead of writing thousand lines of code and you know like you are away from the right solution what you do you have to just drag and drop or you have to write minimum lines of code and you can you have sufficient time to come up with some other approaches too so there is where you know like creativity is still coming in picture you know like for even uh, uh, experienced developers too so uh, that's you know like what i would like to say about this and i would like to invite you know mr harshal and mr mukesh you know if they want to add on please yeah def me. definitely if uh, i am allowed to oh, yeah please sir go on yeah so uh, basically if i recall my uh, college days and uh, we learned fortran and kobol at that time and i still remember that uh, we made a project in uh, kobol and we had uh, 13000 errors in that when we first executed and uh, now if i see the present languages in present languages the uh, exact location of the error is identified very easily so from that time the changes have uh, taken uh, very positively and for children to learn coding today is much much different than what we learned in our time today uh, as he uh, devashish rightly pointed out about no code and low code that that has really helped to uh, make the child very very creative because at our time if uh, they would uh, they would have seen 13000 errors they would not have tried to solve that at all now they they see the error exactly at the place and they can fix it in no time and that is why the success rate of developing apps is more now as compared to in our time in our time the languages were such that Uh, even if they are telling you the errors are there you will not be able to find out where exactly is the error you have the list of errors but you don't know exactly where are the errors because these errors are related to each other so all modern languages have become so user friendly that anyone who is coding will not be afraid of failure because he knows exactly where to fix what to fix right so it is uh nowadays a uh, lot of creative ideas come because the success rate of code results are much better than what used to be earlier i hope uh, devashish i am right in saying that so now i would like uh, harshal to continue with so uh, so in today's class i was teaching scratch they were doing some some drag and drop programming so i was you know telling them to make a game that is a maze game basically 
So you know the terms that they were using, you know, decision making, looping, a certain thing that we came to know when we were in our grade eleven and twelve, and now they are in grade seven and they know what looping means, what decision making means, what the if block is going to do in the program. So <laughs> I think uh, this this generation is you know substantial in knowing all these terms, and I'm sure uh, coding is is never going to stop now. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I wish we could go on and on about this and we, we really can. I mean, coding is vast enough. Uh, we have not even touched upon topics like, is there too much of focus on UI UX? How do you assess somebody's coding skills with a finite number of questions and all of those? But we'll have to unfortunately keep that for another day because we'll have to draw this to a close. Uh, a huge thank you to each and every one of you for sparing your time for this discussion. It's been a privilege listening to each one of you. But it's a thank same you so for much. us. Same for us. I think uh, all three of us enjoyed a lot. Wonderful, sir. That's, that's so good to hear. But the real beneficiary as well is other people that who could listen to you speak. But it's a thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I think uh, you started off by saying that this was not that something that you knew too much of, but you posed the very pertinent questions that kind of shaped, shaped the conversation after you spoke. Uh, to the three eminent speakers, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, your experiences with us. It was very interesting that we had three people who had three very different experiences while first learning how to code. And today, they're all on the same page when it comes to saying that coding is here to stay. Coding helps creativity and coding is the way forward. And ladies and gentlemen who were here listening to this discussion, thank you so much for sparing your time and being with us for one more session. We look forward to having you in our future sessions. Until then, please stay safe. Take care and goodbye. Thank you so much, uh, Shabayu. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.